playoff hockey, where one game can turn a series. No, Major League Baseball is a series of series. You focus on winning each series, you can then focus on the postseason. So a win for the Pirates tonight would mean winning the series with Detroit, their second consecutive series victory. That's how you build a season. That's how you build a winner. celebration throughout Major League Baseball. It's Jackie Robinson Day where teams honor the life and accomplishments of the man. Tonight, fans hoping to hoist the colors once again at PNC Park as the Pirates take on the Detroit Tigers in Interleague Baseball and hope for a series win. Hi again, everybody, along with Bob Walk. I'm Tim Never. Robbie and Smukowski will join us in a bit. On the hill for the Bucks tonight, fresh off the paternity list, is Francisco Liriano. The lefty hopes to pitch the Pirates to a win tonight. Well, hopefully he'll have that good control to where he can put the ball where he wants to. But one thing you know he'll have, and I think it's very important for, for Frankie, is that little extra pop on the fastball. With the extra rest, I think he's going to be throwing the ball pretty hard. And uh, that also means that the slider is going to have a little extra bite to it. And uh, you add all that up, and he's going to get chases out of the strike zone. He's going to get some swings and misses, and that is basically his style of pitching. That's what he needs. Francisco Liriano has been one of a number of guys in the rotation in the early part of the season who are putting up very good numbers, especially in the ERA category. Yeah, and over the long run, this is what wins you games. This is what wins divisions. Is that starting rotation doing their job? And, and they essentially have, even Vance Worley, who didn't really have the greatest start his first time up, you still see he went into the seventh inning. And, you know, how bad can it be when the starter gets into the seventh inning? So as far as the starting pitching is going, we're looking good right now. Starting pitching tonight, Francisco Liriano for the Bucks. He hopes to tame the Tigers and Alfredo Simon. Pirates and Tigers coming up from PNC Park.
Francisco Cervelli leading them out onto the field as we get set for game three of this three game interleague series. Pirates and the Detroit Tigers in the first series at home this year. Francisco talking to home plate umpire Jerry Lane, who's the crew chief. And Francisco Liriano beginning his warm ups from the game mile. Let's take a look at the lineups that were written up by Tigers manager Brian Osmus. Uh, brought to you by Honda. Rajay Davis will lead off again tonight. Ian Kinsler bat second. Miguel Cabrera, 14 out of 23, hitting 609 over his last five games. JD Martinez back in the cleanup spot. Cespedes, Castellanos, McCann doing the catching tonight. Jose Iglesias bats eighth, and the pitcher, Alfredo Simon, will bat ninth against Frankie. Uh, take a look at the. Uh, Francisco's numbers from that first start uh, see he pumped out or punched out seven guys and uh, that basically is a, a vintage Lariano when he can get those swings and misses down out of the strike zone he had the good slider going excellent change up a little pop on the fastball and with a few extra days off I uh, I expect the same tonight and he's going to have to be pretty good going to have to be at your best this is uh, going to be one of the best teams we play or this has been to me uh, one of the best teams you're going to play all year. mariano has been pretty good here at PNC Park. Defensively for the Bucks, brought to you by Honda, Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, Gregory Polanco in the outfield, Harrison Mercer, Walker, and Alvarez the infield. Cervelli catching Liriano. Starling Marte had what Clint Hurdle referred to yesterday as a timeout after struggling the night before and said that he's been challenged lately, but said they watched some film with him. They told him that he needs to slow his heartbeat down a little bit and get back to what he does. And hopefully well, that has worked. Cheha had the day off, came back, locked right back in. In fact, I think his first swing went over the fence it did. after a day off. Hopefully Marte will have that same success. The first pitch to Rajay Davis is low for a ball. Davis. Bunch this one foul. It's one and one. That first pitch called the ball was pretty close to a strike. <laughs> As you can see on WB Mason uh, strike zone, we show it to you. 250, the average for Davis. And swing and a miss. No chase there. Could change up right in the strike zone for a swing and a miss. One and two to Rajay Davis. Davis had a big night last night, drove in the game winning run with a seeing eye single in the seventh that scored Alex Avila. And he was down on strikes, and there's one away for Detroit. There's a, no question about the stuff right there right now. A great change up, and then finished him off with a nice little biting slider and didn't uh, have to really get anything very far out of the strike zone. Her just right there on the edges. Good control, good stuff. So the second hitter in the order, Ian Kinsler. He's got a five game hitting streak going. Pretty good pitch there. For a strike to Kinsler. Fastball velocity at 93. Pitch inside. Kinsler had a hit in his last at bat. He went one for five last night, drove in an insurance run in the ninth inning. Two balls and a strike to Kinsler. Several nice uh, defensive plays made by the Tigers last night. He had one of those. And the Tigers really did play some good defense. They have played terrific defense this whole season so far. And they put it on display last night. They are playing some good baseball right now. The way they are right now, you can't keep this kind of stuff up all year, but they're pitching well. The green last night was just amazing the way his location was. And never really seemed to give anybody anything to hit. But the, the, the pitching, the defense, the way they're running the bases, taking the extra base. When they have a shot at it, and obviously their offense overall, the way they're hitting the ball, extremely impressive. Two right back into the glove of Liriano. Two out. 
but they're tough to beat right now. Pirates have a chance to take two out of three. I think that's be a great accomplishment. Definition of a comebacker. If that didn't hit his glove, it would have hit him. AJ Burnett, solid outing last night. Eight strikeouts, six and two thirds inning. Just had a blemish in the seventh. When he walked two men back to back with one out, one of them scored. And then Cabrera hits this one foul, a long way down the right side. I really like the curveball he was throwing last night. Had good velocity on it because of that little pop he had on it. it looked like it was biting pretty hard. 111 pitches. It seems like the pitch count is not going to uh, apply to AJ all that much this year. Well, there won't be a next year, so no reason to save him. That's right. Because we use them all up. And Clint Hurdle mentioning that in his pressure today, saying, you know, he's. He's earned the right to go a little further. Ground ball to short. Mercer goes out Cabrera. One, two, three, go the Tigers in the top of the first. Pirates coming to bat. All throughout baseball, everybody wearing number 42. And leading off, number 42. Batting second, number 42. You can see Harrison, Polanco, and McCutcheon. Starting lineup brought to you by Toyota. And Walker and Marte, Alvarez at first base. Cervelli behind the plate. Mercer hitting eight. Playing short. Francisco Liriano. That's ninth against the former Cincinnati Red, Alfredo Simon. Yeah, take a look at the numbers from Simon's first start and thinking back to last year there were some times where he was a little wild against the Pirates and you know, we can expect maybe to get a few base on balls but he was real stingy with the base hits the Buckos hit only a, a buck 80 something off his, off him last season so they do uh, take advantage of those walks when they come with some base hits tonight and Simon coming off his only all-star year last year he was selected by the National League's manager Mike Matheny, the Cardinals, to take part in the Midsummer Classic last season. First pitch is upstairs for ball one to Josh. Harrison at 222. One exciting home run. In the first pitch he saw here at home on opening day. Off of Anibal Sanchez. Two balls, no strikes to Josh. Certainly an honor for the players to get to wear that number. Nobody else gets to. Now that Mariano Rivera has retired from the Yankees, he was the last to wear it. Jason Schmidt, if I remember right, was the last pirate to wear it. Yeah. 
Two balls and two strikes to Jay Head. Well, it's neat when you walk in the clubhouse on a day like today, April 15th every year. <laughs> You walk in and you see the jerseys hanging up, and everybody's got the same jersey. It's just a, a very different, but really neat sight. He's a swing and a miss. And Harrison down on strikes, one gone. Hits him with a, a, a breaking ball up and in. An odd location. Slider that, uh, assuming that Jay Hay thought was going to break more than that. And Kind of come down into the strike zone a little bit. Almost like he was tied himself up by swinging at that pitch. Gregory Polanco, seven out of 31 on the season. Left for four last night. A lot of guys will call that up and in the slider like that, a, a backup slider. They call it a backup slider because in their eyes it actually came. Backed up into him. Polanco to right center. Ajay Davis is there for the basket catch. A top spin maybe on that yeah. ball. Ball had a funny spin on it. Davis holds on, and there's two gone for the Pirates. The bottom of the first, and Andrew McCutcheon. Up. Productive with seven runs batted in two home runs. And he is hit by the pitch. That one definitely up and in. Pirates have a base runner after McCutcheon is plunked by Simon. Yeah, that wasn't any backup slider either. Pretty sure that was a fastball that got him. Let's take a look. Yeah, that, that's a heater. One miles an hour. Hit it right on the face of the Pirates. Huh? It did. That's no good. A couple of pretty good ball players standing at first base with Cabrera and McCutcheon. So Cutcher's aboard, two down, Neil Walker the batter. Simon shaking off his catcher, James McCann. Ball one. Simon's got a pretty decent leg kick. There were 15 steals against him last season. Brings that knee up pretty good, which takes a little time. Diving back is McCutcheon. The way the defense is aligned, too. Kinsler at second base is way off the bag. And third baseman. You can see uh, where they're aligned. It's going to be tough to get to the bag should McCutcheon decide to take off. Inside. Sometimes you see a runner take off with a Fielders playing deep anyway, it makes it pretty difficult to get there and make a tag. Two balls and no strikes to Walker. Again, throwing over to first base, stepping back safely. McCutcheon. He's got a pretty good lead, and yeah, getting back easily. Maybe another half a step. Two zero. It's inside. Three balls and no strikes. Walker will be looking for something good here. Three zero. Waiting on deck is Marte. There goes McCutcheon. There's a strike to throw down, and Cutch is safe. Slip to the outside of the bag, and that pop up slide got him in. So the 
shortstop Iglesias covering. As we see McCutcheon get in there just ahead of that tag on the knee. I think they might. Uh, I think they're going to look at it. I don't know. That's a good shot right there. Yeah, they're going. They're going. They're going, to, they're going to look at it. I think he's out. Yeah. That angle. That last angle. Was a good angle. Yeah, really, Brad really, Osmus really, will it, challenge it, this. In real time, didn't it look like he was out? It did. It looked like he got to the outside of the bag and maybe slid around I the, was, the tag at first. I was surprised at the save call. Bob yeah, Davis, yeah, but that was the only way it was going to be safe because the ball got there ahead of him, and the only way he was going to be safe was if he could go to the back corner and the tag was missed. And that's what I think. That's how Bob Davison saw it. Now, as he tagged right there, now the foot hits the bag. It's not absolutely clear cut, but it does look like the back of the glove is hitting the inside of his knee. Well, see, you can't really see when the foot hits the bag there. I don't know what they're going to do. Not sure. Jerry Lane on the headsets to New York. But this might be a flip of coin. But it looks like. Well, let's see. Let's get another good look at this. Now, where's the glove? Is the glove touching his the inside of his knee? Not there. See, I think everything from that angle to me, everything's blocked. You don't see anything. You can't see the tag. You can't see the. the yeah, they call him out. So McCutcheon caught stealing. That does it for the Pirates in the first. Heading to the second, no score. Along with sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. No score to the second we go. Andrew McCutcheon called out after a video replay. Let me see what it exactly uh, they saw in New York. Didn't look like there was uh, enough to overturn it, but apparently there was. J.D. Martinez belts one to left field on the first pitch he sees. So, first hit for the Tigers. Lead off man aboard. J.D. Martinez in the cleanup spot. No Victor Martinez again because uh, Victor doesn't really have a position other than D.H. That's an advantage tonight. Victor's got pretty good numbers against Lariano. So we good. Catching a break, uh, having him as a bench player. Well, you want to Cespedes, the left fielder. And they 
first pitch coming to Jonas Cespedes. Side for a ball. Ball no strikes. Cespedes in the game last night had a double. He went one for three. He has four doubles on the year, hitting 343. Popped up foul down the right side. The uh, skipper Jim Leland has managed both of these teams. I noticed that uh, almost the entire pirate batting practice, he was leaning up against the cage, uh, having conversations with Clint Hurdle. Yeah, that's how he sees the game from his seat. Cespedes, big cut. Well, he liked to have some fun with his players when the time was appropriate, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he was great at that. Not two punched, two balls yeah. and two strikes. With him, it was appropriate time when he said it was. <laughs> he had fun uh, with the players all the time. I mean, he, he would kind of pull pranks on people when you wouldn't think it would, was an appropriate time, but. He'd do it and then it all ended in laughter. Two balls, two strikes to Cespedes. Martinez off of first. Now a full count. I've told this pulled a prank on me, called me in the office at the trading deadline, told me I'd been traded. And I mean I can't even remember now where he said I've been traded, but now it's, it's all we're all tears, crying, hugging, and everything. And then what a straight face he looks at me. He says, "Nobody wants you. Get out of here." <laughs> Bayhoff pitch, flying on a miss, strike three. Assessment is down on strike. Strikeout number two for Liriano. Slider down and in. That's where they get the first one on. Two strikeouts, two down and in sliders. Well, I like the story you told as uh, Nick Castellano stands in about your first year as a broadcaster when he called you in his office and said, How long do you think it'll take you to get ready? Oh, yeah, that was during spring training. Yeah, you, you thought that, or you were thinking he was going to ask you to come back and pitch. Pitch to Castellanos. Cut him this. He went on and on about uh, he was being serious, and I said, "Well, I just started off on this new career." And he goes, "Believe me, because I can fix it, so that you, you can still have your job when you're done, you know, pitching and all this stuff." And so finally, he talked me into it, and I said, "Well, if you're really serious, I said I could probably pitch in a game in two weeks." The one runner goes. Savelli's throw is into center field. Martinez is safe at second. But that's what he always does. As soon as he knows he's got you, after all the and trying to convince you. So throwing from your knees is always difficult. Looked like he knew as soon as he released the ball, he didn't want to look. Yeah, it just kind of was peaking. 0 oh, 2 pitch. So well, he keeps it close enough to him to prevent the runner from moving up. Oh, let him get over there with one out. <laughs> I can't imagine what was going through your head though when he was oh. running through those scenarios for you. <laughs> And then, like I said, as soon as, uh, as soon as he knows he's got you, then he comes clean and says he starts laughing and says, "Who could you get out?" And the conversation's over. I tried to Mercer, a little late at second for the double play. So two men out on a special inside Pirates baseball. Explores some of the Bucks' memorable moments. 
at the most contentious spot in the game, home plate. From fierce collisions to sheer feats of athleticism, relive them all on Inside Pirates Baseball. Ten great plays at the plate tonight after postgame on Root Sports. Still going to see some good plays at the plate, but you won't see, due to the rule change last year, you won't see the types of collisions or at least the frequency of collisions. Contact made between the catcher and base runner, as you would have in the past. But check out that show because that's. I guess uh, there are people who miss that part of the game. Oh yeah, they named the show "Things You'll Never See Again." <laughs> and it's nothing and two to James McCann, the catcher. It's just staying down in the zone. Yeah, if he's getting those chases on that slider, That's especially. Right. Dropping them below the zone. Oh, well, whenever Liriano pitches, we always talk about the fact that he gets strikes without throwing strikes. Yeah, everybody does to some extent, especially strike threes. Most of your strike threes, I gotta believe, if they're if they're swinging strike threes are out of the strike zone. But Liriano's got the knack of getting strike ones and strike twos like that. It's, it's like the uh, he gets the, the hitters in a panic right away. They feel like they have to protect, swing at everything. And there is strike three. It's in the dirt, so Cervelli will have to throw down. Strikeout two, three goes to put out. Strikeout number three for Francisco Liriano. In the Root Sports Studio, Penguin Studio Analyst. Got a pretty good seat here tonight, doesn't he? It might be the absolute best seat. It's almost exactly behind home plate. Just a couple of seats over from the, the old skipper, Jim Leland. I'm sure they'll be chatting. Neil Walker hits this one high in the air, shallow left. Shortstop Iglesias calling for it. And there's one out. Charlie Marte coming to the plate. Let's take a look at our Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, well the day off payoff. That's what we're hoping that Marte, after sitting a, out yesterday's ball game, will now get on a little bit of a roll, hopefully starting tonight. Play mistake free. We, we've been talking about how how good uh, the, the brand of baseball is 
that the Tigers are playing right now hitting and pitching and playing great defense running the bases you have to play just as good a baseball you got to play better baseball than that perfect baseball to beat these, these guys right now there's a few times during the course of a season you'll run into a team that is really hot and doing everything right well that just puts a little bit of pressure on you it's a challenge for you to to do everything right yourself and that's the, the goal in this evening's game for the Pirates to be that team that takes the extra base makes that great defensive play when it's really needed Makes all the pitches. One and one to Marte. Two balls had a strike. Uh, this is kind of like why you really strive to be one of the better teams in the league. So you can have these matchups like that. Have this excitement going on in the ballpark where one of the other real good teams uh, come in and, and you have a, a rubber match game. But when you look at what the Pirates pitchers have done with Detroit again holding them to just two runs yesterday uh, holding them to four runs in game one beating them in game one. I mean this was a team that came in six and oh undefeated. They were averaging eight runs yes. per game and they've only scored six total in the first two. Right. But the, the Pirate pitching is doing very well. So Brad Osmus who celebrated his 46th birthday yesterday. And his team got him a win. And he knows what his catcher James McCann's going through because Brad was a pretty good catcher in his own right. I'm sure he'd taken a few off the mask. 2 2 pitch. A pie in the count full, 3 and 2. Rose on deck. Starling Marte waits for the payoff. And it's a ground ball to third. Castellanos plays the good hop and throws him out. He got the head of the bat to the baseball, hit it sharply. Good at bat. Just didn't get a hit. Alfredo Simon to face Pedro Alvarez now. Simon making his 28th interleague appearance, his fourth interleague start. He has pitched all over the staff, I guess you'd say, throughout his career. He's been a starter, reliever, closer. Pedro, 308, 8 for 26 so far in the season. Three of his eight hits have left the yard. So that one for a strike, one and one. Pedro's reached base in all seven games the Pirates have played this year. How about that pitch? Yeah, what was that? I don't know, it's 58 miles an hour. <laughs> this is the slowest pitch we will see the entire season. That looks like one of those ephesus you threw to Gary Sheffield. No, that, that was way faster. Than, <laughs> the ephus pitch leaves the uh, screen, goes way up, and then comes back down, <laughs> back into view. Wow. I don't know what that was. 58. That's like you're just playing a game of catch out in the outfield. Three and two. Faster throws from the coaches and BP. Cervelli on deck. Two men out. Base is empty. They off pitch to Pedro. To the right side. And Cabrera's got it. He'll handle it himself. And the Pirates gone in order. Inning number two. We'll head to the third at PNC Park. Still scoreless.
Robinson Day. Two Pirates players have some special cleats in honor of Jackie Robinson Day, Josh Harrison and Andrew McCutcheon. First, Josh Harrison cleats are pretty cool. They're in the UCLA Bruins colors. Now, Josh can't wear them during the game because he's not real comfortable with the fit, but also Andrew McCutcheon wearing some special shoes. They're the shoes that Kutch is wearing tonight in center field. So cool way to pay tribute, uh, Tim and Bob. Andrew has done this in the past. This is the first year for Jay Hay. And the cool thing about uh, Jay Hay's shoes with the UCLA colors, uh, really cool. Obviously, Jackie Robinson went to UCLA, but a lot of people may not realize that when he was in college, he was the first varsity athlete to letter in four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and track. Unfortunately, Jay Hay can't wear the cleats tonight, but he was proud to have him at his locker. He tweeted out a photo of him earlier and great stuff and a way to pay tribute to one of the greatest athletes ever, guys. I wonder if Garrett Cole has been on him about trying to get a hold of those. So Cole, a UCLA alum. Maybe, Maybe they'll fit him. Maybe they will. But, uh, but he's interested in him. It's kind of like a glass slipper, trying to see who it fits down there. Pretty sweet shoes right there. And Iglesias takes a ball, one and two. There's the Bruin, Derek Cole. Three seasons at UCLA. He'll go again on Sunday against Milwaukee. This one is fouled off. Count stays one and two to Jose Iglesias. I want to say that he started off, uh, and his older brother as well, at Pasadena City College before they went to. UCLA had started just about everything. Well, he was uh, an incredible athlete. In fact, when he debuted this day in 1947, it was at first base. People think of him as a second baseman, but he, he debuted at first base, played there. That was how he got to break in with the Dodgers. Had to learn a new position. And learned it very well. Two and two to Iglesias and Liriano ready to go. Here's the pitch. Flared to right for a base hit. And Derek Cole on Jackie Robinson. The man has deserved to have his number. Uh, retired at that school for a long time. Lettered in four sports. Um, unbelievable, you know, towards the game of baseball. And, uh, you know, just from everything that we've seen, everything I've heard, um, when his family comes to opening day sometimes for us, or Jackie Robinson Day when I used to play there, um, you know, they're just the most gracious people, and, 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 and I'm sure everybody knows it's well deserved, but it's about time. Alfredo Simon at the plate showed punt. Derek Cole, proud to be a UCLA Bruin. Well, besides the fact that he was a great baseball player, he had you know that, and this I think is the most important thing about the whole deal is he had to be and have incredible character as a man to be able to go through what he did to break that barrier. I mean, it was much more than you know being able to hit or throw a baseball or steal home or any of that. And that was really just a small part of what he was able to accomplish. One one runner goes, throw down by Cervelli, and Iglesias is in. Is going to be stolen base number four on the season for Jose Iglesias. Second one tonight by the Tigers. Well, just look at the amazing jump he had, almost a running start off first base. Two and one, and now Simon will take another strike. Two balls, two strikes. Have you seen the movie 42? I, I never sat and watched the entire thing. I've seen quite a few at different times, bits and pieces of it. One foul and he strikes out. So Simon out on strikes. Uh, folks, if you haven't seen the movie 42, I highly recommend you see it. It is uh, a very good depiction of what Jackie Robinson went through. What, uh, Harrison Ford plays a, a good branch Ricky, too. They 
a depiction of uh, Forbes Field, and I don't think they missed a detail. Rajay Davis will take strike one. Davis struck out swinging in the first. Saw a lot of pitches right at the knees in that first inning, and then the, when he got the two strikes and he got that slider that was broke off down and in, and he swung right over the top of it. Another strike, 0 and 2. Mariano got the 92 mile an hour heater in there for a strike. Look at the location, huh? Absolutely perfect, right up on the hands. That'll freeze you up. You're, you're thinking about that, that change up and that slider down, 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 and then that fastball jumps right up on your knuckles. Davis liked that pitch. Well, that was pretty much right down the middle. And yeah. When Rajay's up there, these two at bats, uh, you know, there is no trying really to get in the chase much. He's gone right after him. All came back off the stones. Oh, two. Popped him up. He'll walk around in shallow right field, called off by Polanco. He'll make the catch. And there are now two men out for Detroit in the third. Here's our day automotive this day in Pirates history. This date, 1952. Then Pirates general manager Branch Rickey made it a requirement for all his players to wear helmets, both at the plate and in the field, making Pittsburgh the first team to make helmets mandatory, something that wouldn't happen league wide. Until 1971. That's one of those I'll bet you didn't know. Could they wear any helmet or would they have to wear a specific kind of helmet? I'm sure it was the helmet Mr. Ricky told him to wear. Whatever whatever helmet it was. Probably right. And the 1 0 to Kinsler is outside, two balls, no strikes. Runner at second base is Iglesias, two men out. Well, it took him 19 years to make it mandatory league wide. Two 0 pitch. And this one hit in the air towards center field, and right there is McCutcheon. Nothing across for the Tigers. One man left after a hit. Two and a half of the books, no score.
Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Malibu and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! On the UPMC scoreboard, Tigers nothing, Pirates nothing on Jackie Robinson Day. Everybody wearing number 42 on this day, April 15th. It's been that way since 2004. Nice night, Pittsburgh. We start the bottom of the third inning. Francisco Cervelli to face Alfredo Simon. And Cervelli hits one high in the air to center field. Playable for Davis. Rajay Davis backing up. One out. These are the kind of nights that weather wise I think pitchers really can enjoy going out there. It's, a, it's not cold to where it's uncomfortable, but there's a little coolness about everything. And it, you really feel like you have energy and you. You know, I, I think you feel like your fastball can, can really pop in this nice, cool weather. Simon winds and the pitch to Mercer. Jordy takes it. You know those hitters; they never like going to the plate when it's even a little bit on the cool side. They think, "Oh, the ball's not going to carry. I might get jammed." And you know, going to get all those bees in your hands. Yep. Makes your hands sting like a, stuck him in a bee's nest. It's not cold like that tonight, but it's just just cool enough to really, I think, make it a, a pleasant evening to be out there on that mound. Good, good night to work. Mercer pops this one up right center. J.D. Martinez will handle it. And there are two away for the Pirates in the bottom of the third inning quickly. Zambelli fireworks light up the sky this Saturday at PNC Park. Watch the Bucks and the Brewers at 7:05. Stay after for an amazing Zambelli fireworks show, courtesy of First Energy Solutions. Plus, every Saturday is an Eaton Park scratch and win Saturday. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. A big weekend, an off day tomorrow. Then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the Brewers are in, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's the Cubs. For Matinee on Thursday afternoon at 12:35. Good long home stand, first home stand of the season. And the Pirates turn around and head out on a nice long road trip again. Yep. Arizona, Three Chicago, cities. St. Louis. 1-0 to Liriano. Now it's 1-1. Go to Chicago. See the new scoreboard. <laughs> I got a feeling I'm not going to be impressed. Slaps it foul to first base side. I'll keep an open mind. Though. Yeah. I, I don't like the early pictures though. That's We've seen the photographs. We haven't actually been there yet, obviously, but we'll be showing it to you, I'm sure. A lot. It's gonna block out a bunch of those houses that we're used to seeing on the left center field. Well, that's not gonna be different sight lines. There's a line drive right at Kinsler. And the Pirates are done in the third inning. We'll head to the fourth. Still scoreless.
Lifelong Roots Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! Tigers nothing, Pirates nothing. Top of the fourth inning at PNC Park. Final game of this three-game interleague set. Tonight's Allegheny Health Network injury update. Charlie Morton threw a bullpen session today, an extended spring. Everybody was pleased with the results. That's the report. And the next step for Charlie will be to make a rehab start Saturday against the Tampa Yankees, where he'll throw three or four innings, and the pitch count will be 55 pitches. So they're looking for at least three ups, as they say. Three innings, at least. 55 pitches for Charlie Morton. So he'll go to Tampa and pitch over there. 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Here's Miguel Cabrera, 0 for 1, grounded to Mercer in the first. Reigning American League Player of the Week. Our announcement came on Monday, midway through the game. Player of the decade. Maybe, maybe. But you just think of the series that he had against Cleveland alone when he had 11 hits, two of them home runs in a three game series. Doesn't happen often. Two balls on strike. Rare hitting talents that, that do come along maybe once a decade. Well, think of the at bat he had against Garrett Cole where he had a 10 pitch at bat just kept fouling off whatever Garrett could throw at him. And not a lot of guys can do that. He stayed alive through the at bat ended up making it out after all but it was a battle between two real competitors. Two strikes on Cabrera. Against Liriano. Nine for 32. 281 against Frankie. Of course, when Liriano was with the Twins. He was in the Tigers division, so he see them more often. The bouncer to Mercer. And there's one out for Detroit in the fourth. Those, uh, those match up numbers like that, where you see the 30 at bats, it, you really can, I think, take that to the bank that that's what you're going to see, uh, you know, for the game that you're talking about. That many at bats, that doesn't lie. JD Martinez had a first pitch single, his first at bat to lead off the second inning. You see a matchup sometimes in single digits and seven or eight at bats, something like that. I, I always wonder exactly now what does that mean? But both both the hitter and the pitcher are still kind of learning about it, each other a little bit. And that's especially true if one of them is real young, you know, first or second year. And you're going to get a little of that uh, a little, little change in how you go about hitting or go about pitching just from your first or second, third season. And you got to get through that before those numbers, I think, will really become meaningful. But when you see 30 at bats, I mean that's it's a pretty good. That you got a pretty good handle on, on, on what the man, matchup is going to be on any particular night. Ball and two strikes to Martinez. Struck him out. Strikeout number five for Liriano. Now something I, I think we're seeing from Frank tonight is that the ability to get strikes. In the strike zone, much more than he's not having to get all those chases on balls bouncing in the dirt. He's, he's going on the edges of the strike zone, but still, I, I would call them strikes and getting some swings and misses. Just really good stuff tonight, which I think everybody expected. He got a couple extra days off. He's going to have good stuff. The question always in that case is what about the control? That, that's been very good also. Cespedes has struck out in the second. He's 0 for 1. Takes high ball one. One oh pitch. Strike call. Control of that slide. Just backdoored it over the outside corner. 
comes the change up. And ground ball to the left side of the infield. Mercer in the middle of the shift. Throws him out. He's in it. Two ground ball outs and a strikeout for Liriano. Harrison coming up. in the Berg during Friday Night Rocks on Root Sports. Some of the best bands on the bird during Friday Night Rocks on Root Sports. Get tuned in to Pittsburgh's music scene as we showcase local artists and tracks throughout every Friday Night Pirates broadcast. Friday Night Rocks starts this Friday at 6.30 when the Bucks take on the Brewers on Root Sports. We go to the bottom of the fourth, no score. Jerry Lane, the crew chief, pointing to something down the right field line. Small girl took care of it. Yeah, whatever it was, it's not there now. And Jay Hay, second time around, struck out first time up, and he takes the ball outside. Those guys are ready for Friday Night Rocks on Roots. They'll be there. Front row. That's good. A new feature this year. It's going to be entertaining. Two old pitch. That's inside. Three and all to Jay Hay. Bucks looking for a base runner. They've had just one. It was Andrew McCutcheon. He was hit by a pitch in the first. Was called safe attempting to steal second base. Brad Osmus, Tigers manager, challenged it and it was overturned by replay and McCutcheon was called out. So that's the only base runner. Simon hasn't given up a hit yet. He's throwing a no hitter right now. Wow, don't say that, Bobby. You get people upset. No hitter, no hitter, no hitter, no hitter. I don't want him to throw it ahead. I know, so but I am trying to jinx him. It's amazing that 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 four-letter word. I am trying to jinx. Begins him. with a J and ends with an X. No hitter. It's amazing. Three-two pitch. And Jay Hay down to third base. Castellanos with a backhand. One out. Somebody had the power to change the outcome of a ball game with words that they say. They should just go play Powerball and be done with it. <laughs> well, here, I'll, I'll show you an example of, of that power right here. Okay. This is the furthest Simon's ever taken a no hitter into a game right now. All right. Gregory Polanco's due. He's 0 for 1. <laughs> it's never gone three and two thirds. Gregory 
is over his last five, six, seven. He's due. He's due. He's over his last seven. Took a strike on the inside part of the plate. One ball, one strike to Polanco. Knocking on wood. It's inside. Remember during the first wild card game two years ago, Bob was about as superstitious as anybody in the radio booth. He was knocking on wood after oh. everything he'd say. Yeah, he was. Catch. You were a crazy. nervous wreck. I was going crazy. Wish I had off. one of Ray Miller's old hats. Yeah, and Ray would have like little. Symbols, different things, triangles and things on the bill of his hat right on the edge. And there are certain times during the game he would set those right on the opposing pitcher's head as he's on the. Bottom. Really? Yeah. It's kind of like a scope? Uh, well, Zeroing in on just uh, the certain jinxes he was putting on. <laughs> 2 2, and this one is fine. Did he have a book of jinxes that he just selected? Uh, I don't a certain know. Jinx? He might have had one at home or something. I never yeah. saw that book. And he's the one that uh, I found out about the knocking on wood. If you had a negative thought creep in, I saw him. He would always sit on the wooden stool. I went back on the bench, and I'd see him knock on it every now and then. I had to ask. And he says every time I get a negative thought, every time I pitched I, after the game, my hand was always all bruised up, bloody knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> But that started in the bullpen for the game. <laughs> Probably sometimes. It's full count to Polanco. Alfredo well, Simon. Right now has it going his way, but Polanco trying to get on board for the Buckos in the fourth. And the ground ball to Kinsler. Two men up. It's the first kids day of the season this Sunday. Bucks and Brewers at 135 and all kids 14 and younger receive a pair of Andrew McCutcheon socks. Compliments of Highmark. Make sure to come down early for the number one Cochran family fun zone. It's on Federal Street. And you can stay after kids can run the bases. Presented by the original Pizza Logs. For tickets go to Pirates.com. And Andrew McCutcheon won't be giving you those socks, but he's got some other socks the kids can have. 14 and under, you'll get a pair on Sunday. First kids' day of the year. It's still a ice cream kind of night, Bob. Oh, it's always an ice cream night. I had my ice cream. You did something? I had the frozen yogurt. And McCutcheon to right field. This one is twisting into the seats foul. Some frozen yogurt with some kale on it. Did you? Yep. I usually go with chocolate syrup on that. <laughs> That's just real ice cream right there. I tried some kale the other day. That's my friend. Did you? Yeah. It's good. I wouldn't go that far. Oh, it's fine. Good I for like you, it. I guess. It's good for you. It's good. It tastes bad. It tastes good. Nothing in two to catch. It's outside. And it's one and two. Those soybeans that you and Brownie eat. At a mommy's. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are really good. Had some the other night, as a matter of fact. And the Walker waits on deck. Two men out. Base is empty. And the one two to Kutch. While back. You don't like those either? I don't think I've ever ate, tried one. Well, we're going one of these to, days you'll talk me. Well, we're going to Arizona soon. There's a good place for those in Arizona. All right. We'll uh, give it a shot. Yeah. 
play the proper technique on how to eat them. It's very difficult. One, two. Two balls, two strikes to McCutcheon. Andrew's average will start to climb here pretty soon. Get into one of those spurts where he just gets red hot and the average will get to where it should be. And a ground ball base hit. First hit of the game off Simon. All right, now we went full on, full press on the jinx this inning. Full, full court press. Are you a believer now? No, full court press. We will pull out every jinx we can name, and boom, there's the base hit. That's got it to the left side. Yeah, just guided that ground ball. Nothing special. That's just that's a jinx base hit right there. Look, look at the smile. That's all skill. There's <laughs> nothing to do with the jinx. Walker at the plate with two down. And that is in for a strike. Well, he's, you know, when you're playing and stuff, you, it's, it's fun stuff on the bench. And, you know, oh, I, I've seen guys do get some that. crazy stuff. I understand all that. But in reality, in the real world, it's they don't mean a thing. Oh, and one to Neil. Player one time that uh, carried around a little sort of package of raw sugar, a little brown packets. Yeah. Put that in his back pocket, got a couple of hits, and he had one in his back pocket every game for the next month. <laughs> yeah. But is that a superstition raw or sugar. a jinx? That's a superstition. No, well, that's a reverse jinx. Okay. That's what jinxes are, that's superstitions. Hey. Right? I suppose. Get back to play a little bit. Uh, last time when he was out there, he was getting back standing up without a tag. So maybe he was taking that extra half step. And if you remember how close that play was, it was overturned. That half step was the difference between out, out and safe. Yeah. Pitcher's doing in terms of reading him, whether you're going one way or the other. Rajay Davis got caught last night. And AJ Burnett and Alfredo Simon seems determined that McCutcheon is going. But Davis just thought he was going to run first move because a lot of teams run on AJ. He was picked off badly. Bob Davidson was the umpire over there, and it was an easy call for him. Pitches outside. And David Rackley, who's at third base tonight, he was behind the plate last night and had a, what appeared to be a very quick hook, throwing out Clint Hurdle. But he had a tough time with that strike zone pretty much all night. There was a lot of uh, talking, I, I think, from the players, and I'm assuming the dugout. I, I, my guess was that wasn't the first word that was said from the dugout. Perhaps not. It had to be a buildup. More than likely not. As we had talked uh, a number of times before that about pitches that had been missed that should have been called strikes that, that weren't or vice versa when we were hitting. Uh, you knew that that pirate dugout was not happy at that point. 3-1 to Walker. And Neil hammers it to right field. That's going to get down. 
in front of Martinez. Back to back hits with two outs. And Walker hit him hard. Yeah, he hit this ball uh, so hard that uh, I was hoping it might handcuff Martinez out there, scoop by him. Martinez breaks in like he thinks he might be able to catch it and then has to handle it. In between hop coming up off that grass, keep it in front of him. So the defensive alignment that on the, on the ground there, everybody's playing in the pole. Nobody at third base. Almost looked like the McCutcheon could have just rounded second, kept on going. There was nobody there. First and second, two down for Starling Marte. Starling grounded out to third first time up, bounces this one to third as well, and Castellanos will step on the bag for the final out. No runs, two hits, and two men left. Through four, Tigers nothing, Pirates nothing. We're all brought here from various schools to PNC Park for a night, the ballpark, and are congratulated for winning the essays. And with me right now is Austin Ward. He is 10 years old and a fourth grader from Boardman, Ohio, about an hour away from here. And he won the third, fourth grade poetry division. Now, Austin, before we came on camera, you said that Jackie Robinson inspires you. Yes. Why is that? He inspired me because he always had to fight through all the fans. And I look up to him when I'm playing baseball, like not get mad if the ref makes a bad call. I always just shake it off and say, maybe next time. That's great stuff. Now, it's a cool story about how you found out that you won the essay. Tell us that story. Well, my teacher pulled me out from gym and said I was in trouble. And I knew I wasn't in trouble, so they took me to the principal's office. And what day was it? April Fool's Day. And I poked my head in and said, April Fool's, but then my teacher said no. And I said, okay. And then they told me I won. And I remember the first thing I screamed was, did I really? I couldn't believe it when I won. There it is. He can't believe he's here right now. It's a cool essay. I'm going to tweet a photo of his essay. It's fantastic work, Tim and Bob, that he did. Austin Ward wrote a great poem about Jackie Robinson. Well, that's great. We'll look for it, Robbie, and we'll uh, give it a little read later on. Tell him congratulations for us. Tim says, congratulations to Bob. Hold it up right there. There's his work right here. I'll be tweeting a photo of this, and it's great stuff. Congratulations from all of us, Austin. Thank you. Two old pitch to Cassianos goes the opposite way for a base hit. One for two for the Tigers third baseman. This will be on Twitter at Root Sports Pit very shortly. Austin Ward, Jackie Robinson Hall. James McCann, the catcher. Castellano said, with nobody up, up, nobody out, 
leading off an inning. Just took the single that was there available, trying to hit a ground ball toward the open side to get an inning started. And I, I, I would think, but I've been thinking this for a while, that you, you're going to see that more and more, and that's going to force the defense to, to then make some adjustments to when they play a shift and when they, they don't play a shift. Now, if he's up there with two outs, then he's going to have to swing no matter what the shift is and try to hit a, get, an, get an extra base hit. But I would think eventually leadoff hitters are going to just say, hey, you put the shift on. I'm trying to hit a ground ball the other way. I'm going to try and, and get an inning started. I know you were talking about that with Stan Saver in the pregame tonight. That very topic. Well, we were, we were kind of talking about the success of the shift. And should there be rule changes? And no, I don't think there should be rule changes. The players can figure it out. Look at the right side is wide open. There's the little ground ball. Just a, a, a nothing ground ball base hit. And now they have a runner with nobody out to get things started. And, and that's what you know baseball to me is all about. It's what the players are doing. And they got them done. That's second. The throw by Alvarez right to Mercer. And Castellanos is caught stealing. Yeah, good job by uh, Pedro getting closer to the mound as he's receiving that throw, giving himself a nice angle to throw to second base. So Pedro get right out on the edge of the grass, so he's got an angle to throw around the runner. Fired a rocket over there. Yeah, waist tie right over the back. Perfect throw. One man is out. Now it's a one ball two strike count on McCann. Castellanos having a word with his manager Brad Osmus. Still one and two. Base runner against a, a crafty lefty with a good move like Luriano. It can be a crapshoot. And there is strikeout number six for Luriano. Two down. And all of those pitches in the strike zone before that. It, it, this has really been a strong game for uh, for Frankie. Being aggressive, throwing a lot of strikes, not just swings and misses that are called strikes because they're they're missed, but he's putting a lot of balls right on the black and the edge of the strike zone, getting called strikes, and then when he gets ahead, then leaving the strike zone and getting his usual chases, swings and misses. 102 at Glacius. Should stop. Take that one for a ball. 2-0. And he does have that good move. You mentioned it a while ago. That that's one of the, the better things that uh, Frankie can do out there. He, he can pick you off first base. It's a little tricky because where he puts that foot down, kind of pushes the uh, the legal limit a little bit sometimes. I think. Well, he got caught uh, on opening day in Cincinnati, called for a balk, and that's how the Reds scored their first run of the season. It was on a balk by Liriano. Billy Hamilton, who scored from third base, turned out to be a big run in that game. And there's ball four. And Iglesias likes to run. He's already stolen a base. He's been on base twice now after having a base hit in the third inning. Yeah, we'll probably see some pickoff throws. And make a Watch that front foot. There's imaginary line that you draw from the rubber. To the 45 foot mark. You can see where that's marked out going down the first baseline where that box is. Well, if he steps to the home plate side of that imaginary line, that's supposed to be a box. Ground ball over the mound. Walker will grab it. He'll throw on to first. And Alfredo Simon is out. No runs a hit. One man left. Halfway home at PNC Park.
Tigers Pirates opening series is presented by Chevrolet. Very pleasant night in Pittsburgh tonight. And a 3D bearded big head of Pedro. <laughs> well, that's a little unique. Took a little time put together. I would say that he gets it an A for effort. Get one up there, Pedro. Resembles the real thing. Pedro bounced out to Miguel Cabrera at first base in the second inning. It's a strike on the inside edge, one and one. Pedro put in some work in the offseason on the beard, too, as well as the defense and the offense. Homering at a pretty good clip to start the season. He's hit a home run in three of the first seven games. So I think you take that all season long. That's a pretty good pace. He looked real good in spring training. I know that's kind of meaningless, but it certainly looks like he's not been able to bring that into the regular season. Hopefully he'll be back uh, challenging for that National League home run crown. Right into the shift. Was out. So making the play was the third baseman Castellanos. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Blanket weather. That's a neat area they have out there down there. A couch. It's almost kind of like sitting on a porch. Yes. That is uh, one of the additions. One of the, uh, Extra amenities that have been added to the ballpark this year. Broken bat looper to left center, and Davis coming on, and he'll make a running catch. Rajay Davis had to go a long way to get it, and he retires Cervelli, and Francisco is 0 for 2. Been a good defensive outfielder for a long time in this league. Watching make plays like this, uh, he's playing pretty deep too. He hasn't lost much when it comes to the speed. Oh, look at that. The snow cone. It almost rattled out. Didn't see that. Allegheny Health Network Supermost slowed it down. And <laughs> we didn't see that at first look. That was close to being a drop. Jordy takes strike one. Jordy fly to right field in the third. That's left over from his old team. So the Yankees on. There's 2 1. Three balls and a strike. You know, I would think that bats have a useful lifespan, even if they appear to still be in good shape. Got to dry out, I think. Got a humidor. A humidor for your bats? Yeah. Become brittle after a while. I well, you think so, depending on where you keep them. Like if you kept it in your, uh, you know, behind a closet door or something for a long period of time, it, it might get brittle. It might stay, uh, stay okay. To use. <laughs> Three, two, out on strikes. 
There's Jordy Mercer. Irons going in order again. We'll head to the sixth. Still scoreless. Tigers Pirates opening series is presented by Chevrolet. Along with Bob Walk and Robbie Smikowski, I'm Tim Neffert at PNC Park. Top of the sixth. Second night in a row, pitcher's duel. No score, five hits combined. Tigers with three, Pirates with two. And it'll be the top of the order for Detroit. Rajay Davis, Ian Kinsler, and Miguel Cabrera to face Francisco Liriano. Francisco with uh, some of the best control that uh, we've seen him have in a while. I mean, he is really going after the strike zone, not right down the middle, but staying on the edges. He's thrown 48 strikes tonight, and only 11 of those, 11 have been swing and miss strikes. So he's not getting all, all those those chases. Normally, it's almost opposite of that. Davis swings and hits it well to left field. Going back, Marte still going, and it is gone. A leadoff home run for Rajay Davis. It's 1 0 Detroit. Well, Rajay Davis, almost more than any of the other hitters, has been a guy that he's been going over and, and going after him, throwing the ball in the strike zone, too. And this pitch is really kind of on the outside part of the plate. Trying to backdoor breaking ball to get ahead. And it stayed out there. Davis hit it like he was looking for it. He'd be guessing a little bit. Went out and hooked it. First home run of the season for Davis. And the next pitch is hits a right field and on the run. Polanco retires Kinsler. Jay Davis drove in the first run of the game last night. And he's done it again here tonight. Last night it turned out to be the game winning run. Let's hope that's not the case tonight. Cabrera. Sits it up in the air to right field. Polanco will have a play. Two down. So a home run and two outs on three pitches for Liriano. Francisco certainly didn't get bothered by that home run and, and maybe start trying to miss the bats. He came right at the next two guys, even Cabrera. 
All right, in the uh, middle of the inside half of the plate. Then in the pop it up, shallow right. J.D. Martinez, one for two, singled and stole second in the second inning, struck out swinging in the fourth. And a strike call. Another called strike. Two ninety seven, four home runs. He leads the Tigers in home runs with four. In fact, J.D. Martinez on opening day against Minnesota became the first player in the majors this year to hit a home run. Two strikes on Martinez. One two delivery. Can we get him? No. Inside. Count is even two and two. The Tigers are showing pretty good discipline by not chasing it. And, and Lariano has kind of like made that adjustment, knowing that okay, these guys are they're not going to chase too much, and I'm going to have to throw a few more strikes, and he's thrown a lot more. And it's paid off. He's really pitched well to this point. This homestand so far, we've seen some good starts. Cole, Burnett last night, Mariano tonight. Just the one blemish, the Davis first pitch home run this inning. Payoff pitch. Foul back. You see Jeff Locke there to the right. Jeff. Back out on the hill pretty soon. As he will be opposite Jimmy Nelson of the Brewers on Friday night. Strike three. Strikeout number seven for Liriano. One run on the home run by Rajay Davis. Tigers on the board first.
Tigers Pirates series on Root Sports is presented by Chevrolet. Bottom of the sixth, one nothing. Tigers in front. J. Davis, the home run. Francisco Liriano is going to be finished for the game. His spot leads off in the bottom of the sixth. So he'll be pinch hit for. Andrew Lambo will go to the plate to face Alfredo Simon. Mariano gets through six and finds himself trailing. Pirates can still help him out here by getting a couple of runs. And get a decision for him on the other side. Rajay Davis hit a 392 foot home run. It was his first ever home run here at PNC Park. See the bench just moved him over a little bit. They're really playing almost dead behind the pitcher. Straight away. 2 0 to Lambeau. Still hoping for a little wildness here, a couple of walks. Somebody get the big hit. Two all. Oh, strike right on the inside corner. Jared Hughes loosening up. Two one. Lambo takes one. Well, that's a strike. Let's see where it was. I think it's a little, a little low. Huh? It was low and out of the zone. Called a strike nonetheless. Two balls and two strikes to Andrew Lambo. For his first hit of the season. What happens when you get the get two strikes on you? That, that that changes your bat around, changes your approach around. You got to get in protection mode and swing at pitches like that. And if that pitch would have been called low, then you know, you're looking at ball four. He wouldn't have swung at that that the pitch with the number five on it. With two strikes. Got to get defensive. Lambo hits this one in the air to shallow center. And Davis makes the catch for the first out. The Bucks are back and so are free shirt Fridays. This Friday, the Pirates take on the Milwaukee Brewers at 7.05. Be one of the first 20,000 fans through the gates and receive a free Pirates t-shirt presented by Point Park University. For tickets, go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. We've got some uh, T-shirt type weather. Friday night, game one between the Bucks and the Brewers. Harrison rips it down to third, but right there is Castellanos. Two outs quickly in the sixth. Jay Hayes 0 for three. He's grounded to third twice now. Hit that one hard, just right at him. 80 pitches so far. See, uh, Jay Hayes just frustrated. Hit it like he wanted to, but no luck with the direction. Polanco takes a nice one there for strike one. One pitch. And that's strike two. So Gregory finds himself behind in the count. Nothing at two to Polanco.
wrecking ball on the way. And Gregory rips it into the ground of Cabrera. Two balls at it again, right on the button. Pirates retired in order. We'll move to the seventh. Change when it came in game one of this series, the seventh inning, bases loaded, nobody out. Jared Hughes, first pitch he throws, turns into a 6 4 3 double play. Then he gets Avila to pop out to Jay Hay. Very quick work to get out of a bases loaded, no out jam, and that certainly changed the game in the seventh on Monday afternoon. And here is Jared Hughes pitching in the seventh inning again as Francisco Liriano. Right now on the hook, his teammates during the inning break. Congratulating him on an outing that was uh, very effective, except for the one swing by Davis. Now the thing that uh, I loved about that Jared Hughes outing was just uh, showing is you know, the ground ball double play was great because that's what Jared does. I mean, we've, we've seen that uh, go out there, throw the double play ball. Uh, that, that's why he comes into those situations. But the third out was not something that he's real good at elevating the fastball putting it in a good spot to get the the pop flyer the swing and the miss that that ball in on a guy's hand especially a lefty and that's exactly what Cervelli called for he wanted the ball up there he put gave him a high target which is very unusual for Hughes, and he put it right there he executed the pitch that he's not all that comfortable with and got a, a big key out the great out. Two balls and one strike to you. One is Cespedes. And it's nice to have a guy for Ray who he can have come out of the bullpen and just fire sinker after sinker, get ground ball outs when you need them. This one up in the air down the right field side. Polanco running after it. Now to make the seats. All those bullpen guys, they bring a little something different to the table. When you go out there and bring them in with something. Cameron Earl with that, that big fastball of his in last night's ball game. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to him today for a while. He was our, our guest on the radio pregame, and he is so excited to be in Pittsburgh. He is very excited to have this opportunity because it just wasn't working as well for him with the Marlins. Yeah, you get that horrible weather down there in Florida. Yeah, right. I can see this point. Yeah. And if you don't like the weather outside, just go inside and close the roof. But I was talking about, uh, you know, being discovered as a hard thrower. He's always been able to throw hard, but then he needed to learn how to pitch. And now he's says he has a cutter working well. His split finger is controlling that much better. When you 
got a 91 mile an hour split to go against your 99 mile an hour fastball. That's a pretty effective weapon. Well, the key for him is that to be able to command those pitches. They're, they're all great, but he's got to be able to not walk people. That's been a big key for him so far. But it's getting a piece again, following it back. It was an amazing catch he made. <laughs> All ago. Straight out, snag it. That's going to be a good picture right there. Got the Batman hat on. Got the baseball. AJ fan. Swing and a miss, strike three. Cespedes out. Second time he's gone down on strikes. And the eighth Tiger to strike out. Slapped it out of his hand tonight. And on that play last night when Cabrera knocked it out of his hand after striking out, Cervelli said after they were just playing and it's uh, not a big deal. Really downplayed the issue. And the fans let Cabrera hear about the next few times he was at the plate, but you gotta remember Cervelli and Cabrera both from Venezuela, they're both countrymen. Both have a lot of fun with this game. Up the middle, a base hit for Castellanos. That was his second hit. Tiger third baseman, two for three. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Omar Vizquel standing behind. Castellanos. Still the first base coach for the Tigers. What an infielder. Also from Venezuela, like Cabrera and Cervelli. Still has to like watching the shortstop they have now. Jose Iglesias, very good fielder. On deck. And Castellano declares himself safe at first. Pulling double duty. No one ball, no strikes, one out, one on. And Jared Hughes ready to deliver. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Jared. Sink right there at the end, dipping down underneath the bat. Two sink fastball. Just that little finish right at the end. Normally, it won't get you a swing and a miss, but it'll get you a ground ball on. Strike two. It's nice to row, same place. Yeah, it's nice to hear Jared talking the other day after. Opening day, he was asked if he ever had thoughts about being a closer. He said, "No, I'm just happy to be pitching in the major leagues." And he said, uh, "This is, this is what it's all about. So whatever they want to do with me, whatever role they want me to pitch in, that's what I'm going to do." One, two, to James McCann. Struck him out. Well, those are three carbon copy pitches in a row. The same result on every one of them. The little cluster there is swung by over all three of them. Good look at the, the kind of the side spin that uh, is on the ball with the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl showing you that. The release of that two seamer of the ball kind of instead of the perfect backspin, it's got a little side spin to it. 
So gravity can do its work with that baseball a little bit better. That's where you get that sink. Jose Iglesias. Yeah. Base hit in the third. You kind of spend that the infielders and the outfielders try and stay away from when they release the ball. They want the backspin so that their throws will carry, especially those outfielders. One and one to Iglesias. He puts some nice backspin on some throws. He does. From the time he entered the big leagues to now, fewer and fewer guys are running on Marte. Good pitch by Hughes. Yeah, that one looked like it really had a lot more sink than those uh, previous ones. You can see it kind of drop about three or four inches right there at the end. Hughes shook off every sign. A little spin of the number one that means sinker. One two now. Cervelli couldn't hang on. He, he got part of that. Cervelli's in some pain. Francisco Cervelli. Feeling some discomfort right now. Air knocked out of him. Okay. Todd Tom's like the trainer out to help him out. It might take him a minute or so. Well, while we have a moment, let's look ahead. Nissan Road ahead after the day off tomorrow, Friday. Free game show beginning at 6 30. Jimmy Nelson, who pitched very well against the Pirates in Milwaukee, will take on Jeff Lott. Then Saturday, Kyle Loesch and Vance Worley, the matchup. Sunday afternoon, Matt Garza and Garrett Cole as the Brewers come in. Jeff looking forward to his next outing for sure. Francisco seems okay. Easy for me to say. <laughs> Probably doesn't want to call another one of those sinkers, but he has to. A ball and two strikes to the shortstop, Jose Iglesias. Didn't call a sinker. <laughs> Go to first. Castellanos says he's safe again. Uh, it was just going to a fastball away, but he did give the uh, hook of horns thing there. Comes the sinker. Too far inside. Count is even two and two. Glacier's been off to a hot start. Currently hitting 500 on the season for a week and a half. This will fill the count up. Give Castellanos a head start. Pretty good play by Cervelli to keep that ball in front. Network super most slowing it down for us. So it just caught the heel of his glove, didn't it? Yeah, that's not the way you, they, they teach you to do that with a man on first, but in that case, it worked. There goes the runner, 3 2, swung on a miss, strike three, and Hughes strikes out the side. Detroit with a 1 0 lead. It is stretch time at PNC Park, middle of the seventh. It's time for the seventh inning stretch 
We invite you now to stand, follow the bouncing Eaton Park Smiley Cookie, and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we say, take me out to the ball game. And with the Bucks and some of the best bands in the bird during Friday Night Rocks on Root Sports. Get tuned in as Pittsburgh's music scene is on tap. We showcase local artists and tracks throughout every Friday Night Pirates broadcast. Friday Night Rocks starts this Friday at 6 30 when the Bucks take on the Brewers on Root Sports. Texting her friend to tell her all about Friday Night Rocks. Adam McCutcheon leads off, bucks down a run. Tigers with five hits, Pirates with just two. And Simon delivers, and first pitch is popped up to shallow left. Out to get it is the shortstop Iglesias. McCutcheon's now one for two. Well, last night and tonight, Bob, the Pirates have had a problem. In terms of bunching anything together, they started to in the fourth inning with two hits back to back, but that came with two outs. Nothing developed out of it, but the well, last night they, they, got. they only sent two men past the minimum to the plate last night, and they're right around there again tonight. So Shane Green pitched perhaps one of the best games of, of his career. He's had two outings this year, both have gone eight innings. And again tonight, the Pirates just two over the minimum. So, Neil Walker trying to get something going in the late innings against Alfredo Simon. This will be the 86th pitch for Simon. And a bouncer to Cabrera. And two down quickly for the Bucks. And how about this sneak preview of the dinner tomorrow night? Point Park University tweet. Steve Blass will be honored by the Lions Club. He'll be getting the Myron Cope Legend in Sports Award. That's right, Steve Blass. Oh, I was hoping he didn't have a jacket on. He's going to have to clear out some more space. I'll have to see that shirt again one more time. Tonight. Ah, yes. His camouflage shirt. I don't know. If you call that camouflage? Not really. You're in a. Uh, Feel the dandelions on or a psychedelic dream. How old's that jacket? It says Fox Sports. It's it. got a very old logo. He might be in need of an upgrade. Steve didn't throw much away, I don't think. See, that's some real camo right there. And Steve wasn't wearing that earlier. The opposite of that. Two balls and a strike to Starling Marte. Two outs, bases empty. Pirates just haven't had much traffic on the bases against these Tigers in the last two days.
two and two. Tigers, believe it or not, at seven and one, started the day in second place in the American League Central. Kansas City unbeaten at seven and zero. Oh. They were off yesterday. The Royals in action now against Minnesota. They're tied at one in the fourth inning. Brad Osmus has a good squad. That's up high. Tigers leave here. They go home. They'll take on the White Sox and the Yankees for four, and then Cleveland after that. So they've got a long homestand coming up at Comerica Park. Pirates will be back there later this summer to return this series. Payoff pitch to Marte. Up in the air, shallow right, Kinsler out, and coming on is J.D. Martinez. And the Pirates send just three men to the plate again. Alfredo Simon has things going his way tonight. And may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. High back at you as we go to the top of the eighth inning. One to nothing, Tigers lead. Tony Watson comes on for the Buccos to pitch the eighth. He'll face Alfredo Simon. And in the top of the order, Isaiah Davis and Ian Kinsler. It's that kind of game that really puts a lot of pressure on uh, the relievers like Tony coming in here now and our offense just really scuffling. And you, you want to give them a chance, and you know that the, the way that things are going right now, you can't afford to give up a run. Tony has been in this position uh, so much with the Pirates. He's really just taken off, I think, in this eighth inning role. But there's a lot of pressure that comes with this. It just no way can give up a run. It's almost like a closer type situation. Simon takes a swing and a miss. Well, one thing we've seen, and the reason Simon is still in the ball game right now, we've seen. Tiger pitchers go deep for the most part this year, so Brad Osmus has not had to use the bullpen quite that much. Eight innings yesterday for Green. And Green already had an eight inning outing, and he doesn't even have the services of that guy yet, Justin Verland. DL. He did throw a sim game here today, simulated game. Nathan's on the DL. Closer. Closers on the DL. No balls and two strikes to Alfredo Simon. Still a one-two. The Tigers, uh, before they got here, been busy proving everybody that they could just go out slug them all. 
with uh, all those runs they were scoring, and now here at PNC Park, they're trying to show that they can win pitching duels. Came out on top last night in a pitching duel. Have the upper hand here. First six wins. They went six and zero to start the year. Their first six wins, they had six or more runs in each game. The closest anybody got to them was three runs. That was their smallest margin of victory. Jose Davis waiting on deck. Watson's 0-2. Simon hits it right in front of home plate. He's tagged out. That ball is in fair territory, right in front of home plate. Savelli picked it up. Tag Simon. Now Brad Osmus will get a clarification. Talking to Jerry Lane. Let's see. Did this ball hit Simon? No. Well, he might have kicked it right here. No. I don't know what the argument could be. That's a fair ball. It's as fair as they get. <laughs> Is a two unassisted on the put out. I wonder what Simon thought it happened there that he thought he was you know, a foul ball. What was his argument? Jay Davis takes up high and who's bringing the lumber? Brought to you by Yellowwood. Jay Davis brought the lumber in the sixth inning. First pitch he saw from Liriano. Hit it 392 feet. First home run of the season. That's the difference in the game right now. One nothing ball game late. Watson's one one. On the corner for a strike. It's one two. Tad inside, but now he's on the defensive. He's got to fight some stuff off. So, you know, Cervelli keeps his eye on him a little bit as he's giving the signs, looking up. Catchers are always making sure that the hitters aren't peeking down at him. Pretty good looking pitch. Call the ball. See where it was. A little bit low. On in. Inside a little bit also. 2 2 from Tony Watson to Rajay Davis. Down to third. Harrison handles it nicely and throws him out. Two out in the top of the eighth. This will bring up Ian Kinsler, the second baseman. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Kinsler lined out to Polanco last time up in the sixth. Current batting average, 351. He will take strike one from Watson. A couple games in the division right now. Chicago leading Cincinnati 4 0, bottom of the fourth. At the top of the fourth, St. Louis ahead of the Brewers 2 1 in St. Louis. One one to Kinsler. Clint Hurdle was talking about him after opening day, and he said that he's about as good a backyard ball player as you're going to find. Of course, Hurdle was his hitting coach in 2010 with Texas. It's this one deep to right field. Backing up Polanco. He makes the catch on the warning track. Pedro Alvarez will lead off for the Pirates in the bottom of the eighth inning. Pedro looking for a big swing. Can El Toro tie it up?
Fifth inning. Yeah, PNC Park. Pirates continue this homestand as they open up a three-game set against Milwaukee. See Jeff Locke take the mound for the Bucks. In this first game of the series, Friday, starting at 6:30, with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason and Pedro facing Alfredo Simon takes ball one. Well, there's been action in the Detroit bullpen uh, ever since the little. Talk at the plate about the Simon's uh, at bat. Oh, no pitches inside two and oh, that was the 94th pitch. So he's going to be on a short leash this inning, I would think. Java Chamberlain warming up. One of those situations where if he keeps getting them out in a one, two, three fashion, he'll probably stay. But Pirates get anything going, I think they're going to go to the pen. Two balls and a strike now to Alvarez. Pedro can change the game with a swing. The Tigers are giving him the entire left side of the infield. They'll shift it all the way over to the right. And Pedro fouls it off to the left and out of play two and two. Game. It's just going to take one big swing. It would appear. And a ground ball. Kinsler there. One out. Now that's the the ground ball where the shift really pays off. Days you'd always have a, a second baseman playing to pull, but there was nobody up the middle to make that play. But when you put the shift on, that's where the extra player goes. He can uh, he can play what would be normally called a second base position, shading up the middle. So that takes away that turns that ground ball that used to be a hit into an out. Francisco Cervelli's 0 for 2. He's flied out to Rajay Davis in center field twice. Because even if you had the shortstop playing almost dead up the middle, that one still goes through. One over to Cervelli. That's fouled off. It during the game. We talked about it in the pregame, Bob. And hitters have to adjust to the shift. And we did see Pedro working hard on going the other way during spring training. He did it successfully a number of times. Yeah. A, a guy like Pedro, though, it's, it's kind of tough because he's such a power threat. You were just saying it out. I mean, he can get you a run just one swing of the bat. So do you really want him to lead off the inning with a single? The other side of the coin is up in Milwaukee. He led off the inning with a single, a ground ball through the left side that was wide open. You remember that inning? Yeah. We scored six runs in that inning. It was the ninth inning. He hit a ground ball single through that side, and, and that got the ball rolling for the Pirates. And then after that, it was just hit, hit, hit. So it's it's not a an easy answer for a power hitter. Now for the other guys, yeah, if they're going to let you have a hit, you need a run late. That side's open. Go ahead, get on base. Another power hitter, Corey Hart, in the dugout, in the bat, and a helmet. And, and one other quick thing, too. I talk about it like that's an easy thing. Just get there and hit a ground ball the other way. It's not an easy thing. It's something that the guys, I, I don't think, really work on. Just hitting a ground ball the other way. Uh, you know, maybe they, they do it a couple times during batting practice, just to say, okay, I did it. You know, off a coach. But it, it's. It's difficult to do in a game to do that. It's something I think guys might put more emphasis on as we go deeper and deeper into this shifting era of baseball. Guys will start really making sure that that's in their uh, their toolbox, being able to hit a ground ball the other way. And obviously, the pitch they choose matters too. Easier the pitch in the outer half, 
sometimes you get it inside out. J.D. Martinez did that against the shift. He went the other way in the second inning when he let off with the first pitch base hit. Yeah, he's definitely a home run type guy too. Leads a team at home runs. So Valley up in the air to center field, going back Davis. He's got room. And for the third time tonight, Francisco Cervelli flies to center. Two down, bottom of the eighth. Alfredo Simon right now twirling a two-hit shutout. And Jordy Mercer wants to have a say in it right now. He's 0 for 2. Fly to right, struck out. Spring training left there, went to Philadelphia for two exhibition games and opened on the road, six on the road, Cincinnati, Milwaukee. You come home, you get perhaps the best team in the American League, the Tigers. And they'll have a well earned day off tomorrow. But it's going to be tough every night. That's why it's the big leagues. The Pirates are a very good team themselves. And there's going to be a lot of teams talking about, wow, the Pirates are coming into town. We, it's going to be tough. But you're right. It's, it's the major leagues. That's the way it is. It's the way you want it to be. Oh, two to Mercer. Bye. Hundred and seven pitches for Simon. Some solid contact. He's down on the count one and two. And a bounding ball to short. Glacis throws him out. Still just two over the minimum have come to the plate through eight full innings. One nothing Detroit. From the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl again tonight. Our guys doing a great job behind the cameras. 
One run, five hits for the Tigers. No runs, two hits for the Pirates. Top of the ninth inning. And Alfredo Simon getting the handshakes. Eight strong innings. Just two hits. And emulating starting pitcher last night, Shane Green, with facing just two over the minimum. They're taking a look now at, uh, at Melance and stats. Not what we normally see uh, from Mark, that's for sure, especially that opponent batting average up there at 385. But there's so few innings pitched that those numbers will move around quick. And I think what everybody is going to be looking for tonight is this. See what kind of pop he has on that fastball or the cutter. Miguel Cabrera 0 for 3 tonight. He's grounded out to Jordy Mercer twice and flied out to Gregory Polanco and right. The balls are two strikes to Cabrera. Pirates are keeping an eye on the velocity of Mark. See if it's uh, going to go up a little bit. It was down a little bit in his last outing. On the right field side, and that's a foul ball. Yeah, I think it's been down and, uh, really through spring training, and they just haven't had that real good zip to finish on the cutter yet. It is not uncommon for guys to, to go through a, a little. Down period with their velocity. It happens to just about everybody at, at some point. But unless you're getting old, which isn't the case with Melanson, or you have uh, some injury, then it's almost all the time just a temporary condition. And you get that arm strength, it'll come back. And with Mark, it's, you're, we're only talking a couple miles per hour. And what that does for you is it just gives you a little bit. More bite on that cutter. A little less time for the uh, the hitter to make his decisions. We saw a very good example of that last year with Liriano. The start of the season, he really wasn't throwing as well as uh, he we saw him uh, the year before. The velocity was down on both the slider and the fastball. But then the second half of the season, he got well. He was perfectly healthy. Velocity came back up and he had a, an outstanding second half of the year. Great run down the stretch. Two is up high. Count is even two and two. That's down one nothing in the ninth. Uh, Rajay Davis, sixth inning solo homer, the difference. Spoiled, but otherwise was a terrific outing by Francisco Liriano because the Pirates were behind and Liriano's spot was coming up in the bottom of the sixth. That's why he was lifted for a pinch hitter. Otherwise, he probably would have continued in the ballgame. Three two to Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera can do to you. Keep fouling off pitch after pitch. And he stays alive. Oftentimes he'll hurt a pitcher this way, not only by running up the pitch count, but by getting a hit at the end of the at bat. Well, that one didn't feel well. You can see him shaking his hands. That one got off the end of the bat, stung him a little. And the payoff. Again, fouled off. Very disciplined hitter when it comes to his approach. He knows he it can hit the ball very hard any direction out there. So never gets in the, you know in a big hurry to try and pull everything like you see some power hitters. Doesn't matter to him. Like it got Jerry Lane, the umpire. And the first base umpire, Hunter Wendelstedt's coming in. Ben Potenziano, one of the trainers, called it out. 
He'll get this one down on the jaw. Bite his tongue. Masks are built to take the hit, and oftentimes you get hit straight on. You're not going to feel it very much, but if you get hit just right, you're going to feel it. Taking a uh Punch with a boxing glove. You get that cushion there, but still going to jar you pretty well. He must have uh, something. It bit his tongue. Something with a tooth, maybe. Well, the veteran umpire Jerry Lane being helped off. So you assume at this point they'll be finishing this game with three umpires. And Hunter Wendelstedt apparently will go put the gear on. And we move behind home plate. Cabrera going down to first base. Now, when we show, when we were showing the uh, the replay, it looked like he swung. I mean, or fouled it off, maybe. No, I I didn't see the foul ball. That's what I was wondering about. Like, why wasn't that ball four? Well, now that's Hunter Wendelstead right there arguing with. with uh, or accepting the argument with Brad Osmus. Looks like Bob Davidson's going to put the gear on. And they could settle this. It's just looking at the replay, perhaps. Well, actually, you cannot call a pitch with the replay, so they can't use it for this particular item, but we're going to show you. Now when I saw this first time, I, I didn't see it hit the bat. I think this goes straight off the glove. Okay, it's up out of the strike zone, the tenth pitch. Check swing. So is that ball four? That would be ball four. It was a three-two pitch. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jerry Lane, you know, temporarily incapacitated, couldn't make the call. So, so what is the call? I mean, you know, I, that's what th I think. That's what Cabrera was uh, was asking. Like everybody was looking at her. And see, he's making the safe sign. Was it did, did I swing or not? That's what Cabrera was asking. He's it's either strike three or ball four. Uh, if, am I seeing that right? It's got to be would correct. Think so. If they decide it's a foul ball, he'll get back up there. But you're right; those are the only three possibilities. And it looks like he's putting his shin guard back on, getting ready to, to huh. hit. Huh. Yeah, everybody's laughing about it back behind the plate. <laughs> but here's another another thing: it's not a if it was a foul ball, would Cervelli went running after it? He went running after it either because it was strike three and he had to throw down the first or it was ball four and he had to go pick up the ball and call it so that they would call time. You don't run after a foul ball. No, very bizarre. Very so, strange. I mean, that's the that that tells you that that should have told the umpires it's either strike three or ball or ball four one of the two. Because if you watch the replay Cervelli goes after it like he thinks it was either ball four or strike three. They don't chase after a foul ball. So in the meantime, Mark Melanson has to continue to keep his arm loose during this delay while Bob Davidson goes and puts the home plate umpire. Watch the valley in this for replay. Now his reaction is either ball four or strike three. See, I mean, he, he's not going after a foul ball. See, he wants a check swing call. He, he's he's going to say he swung at it. He wants a strike three, or he still has to. If it's ball four, he's got to run after it too. 
if that's a foul ball he's not chasing that over toward the dugout. Mark Melanson talking with Hunter Wendell step right now. And we await the emergence. Of the other two umpires David Rackley and. Bob Davidson. Finish the game with three umpires, and we hope that Jerry Lane is okay. And now Cervelli and Cabrera talking about the play. Different points of view, perhaps. Uh, it's either your point of view is either. I mean, with that, with that conversation there. It was either yeah you swung at it and you should be struck out or no I didn't swing at it and it should have been ball four. That's what they're uh, got to be arguing about. Not arguing but just kind of. Talking to each other. Well certainly a strange at bat. Ten pitches already. A pitch that might have been strike three or ball four but apparently the only thing we can assume. Is that it was ruled a foul ball. So. We, uh, we wait now and. David Rackley comes out. To remain one of the base umpires. I wonder which umpire called foul ball. I mean, somebody had to make a call that it was a foul ball. I wonder which umpire did that. Apparently, when the umpires got together, they decided foul ball. They decided foul ball. We got word back from the replay. Operation Center in New York that there was a collaborative call by the umpires. And again, that's nothing that is reviewable. That's not a reviewable situation. So it's not like video replay will change the call. We can show it to you. <laughs> and you can see what you want to see on it and make your own decision. But the call in the game is a foul ball, so Miguel Cabrera is going to get at least an 11th pitch. And Mark Melanson waiting patiently. What about Mark? What does this do to a pitcher? <laughs> oh, you, you absolutely hate this. Have to stand out there and wait. I'm sure they gave Mark the option. He can go and sit in the dugout. Uh, well, uh, you, you have this stoppage in play. Mark probably decided I'd rather just go ahead and stand out here, play some catch. In the meantime, Cabrera having some conversations with Pirates fans over near the on deck. Cervelli is talking with somebody uh, in the uh, Tiger dugout. That's what all that conversation that we saw with him. Here comes Bob Davidson. Looked like Cabrera was going back there and said something to Leland, his old man. He might have, yeah. Well, Davidson was behind the plate on Monday afternoon. So he'll take the home plate duties for the rest of the game tonight. And now they're probably giving an update. And Bob Davidson comes out and tells Cabrera to go to first base. And now Clint Hurdle is not going to be happy about this. After they had already ruled it a foul ball, Bob Davidson walks out, takes over, and says, Go down to first base. Strange just got even more strange. Well, now you know what I would do now. Now I would appeal. Say, did he swing? Right? Why not? <laughs> they haven't uh, had an appeal yet. They've asked, but they didn't get. Now, now that you know that it was called ball four, maybe now they would appeal. But after watching the bat, I don't think that they would call a swing on that. 
Doesn't look like he's swung very, very far. So Wendelstedt, who is a first base umpire, who would be the one asked for an appeal, is uh, saying a bunch of things now to Francisco Cervelli. We hope to get back to some baseball here in a moment. After this uh, unusual situation has been sorted out. All started with a ball that went right off of the mask of home plate umpire Jerry Lane and injured him. He has left. And it has been about 11 minutes since the last pitch was thrown in this game. Well, after watching the replay, to, to be totally honest, I think that if, if eventually they got to play right. After watching that replay, it looked like ball four to me. I don't know did it, what you saw, but I, I even originally thought okay, that's got to be ball four because I didn't see a swing. Here it is again. It definitely doesn't hit the bat, and I don't see a swing that you could call it where you would say, yeah, he swung at that. So Bob Davidson comes out with a gear on. The very first thing he does after talking to his fellow umpires is award Cabrera first base. Without a doubt, that might be the strangest walk he's had in his career. At least the longest walk. It took over 11 minutes before he was awarded first base. Francisco Cervelli trying to figure it out. The top of the ninth inning, nobody out. Cabrera was the first batter of the inning, by the way. Lanson will be allowed to warm up a little bit more. Well, I know, it, you know, as a Pirate fan, you don't like to see him down at first base, but well, like I said, I think they've the umpire's got that one right. J.D. Martinez will be the next hitter. Nothing lead. They've got the leadoff man aboard here in the ninth. Well, we say it all the time. You see a thousand games and see twenty thousand games, and you're still going to see something you've never seen. Davidson now calling the balls and strikes and J.D. Martinez at the plate. He's one for three. A Fourteen and a half minute delay, if you will. Short rain delay. Yeah. Pitch to Martinez is outside for a ball. A well, double play would clean things up nicely. See if Mark can get a ground ball out of Martinez. One oh pitch from Melanson. And not a ground ball. Fly ball to left. Plenty room for Marte. And one out. You want a Cespedes. Struck out twice and grounded out to Mercer. Three sixteen average, no homers, three runs batted in. Some of these uh, gaudy batting averages that the Tigers brought in are starting to come down a little bit. They're still very respectable, but sure, their hitting numbers not like they were when they got here. Pitch to Cespedes. All one. Well, Pirates pitchers have held Detroit's hitters, relatively speaking, in check after the offensive onslaught they put on the Minnesota Twins for three games and the Cleveland Indians for three games before heading to Pittsburgh. No 
1 0. Foul back, one ball, one strike. Cespedes, former athletic, former Red Sox outfielder. Now with his third major league club with the Tigers. So one one count. Cabrera at first base. The pitch. And a bouncing ball to third. That is a foul ball. And it's one and two to Cespedes. First base goes Cabrera. They almost got the ground ball to third they wanted. They might have ended the inning with an around the horn double play. And last inning I was talking about how you know, there's pressure even though that you don't have a lead in these situations. You just can't afford to give up another run. That was we talking about Tony Watson. Well, that's certainly true here. In in the ninth, same situation. Got to keep this a one-run ball game. Get that double play. Ground ball to third. There's one. There's two. Nice. Last wraps for the Buccos. Down a run. Heading to the bottom of the ninth. Jonas Cespedes hits into an around the horn inning ending double play. A real fine job uh, by Jay Hay to get this one started. Quickly to his backhand, real smooth with the catch. Good quick delivery over toward Walker. Walker did his, his job with a nice turn at second. That is our Chick fil A double play. Just in time. Well, that might be a huge play in this ball game. Being able to turn two. Well, Corey Hart will lead off for the Bucks. Romine is out at third base. Andrew Romine and on the pitch is Joaquin Soria. He ended up with a save last night. His third of the season. Pitch up high to Corey Hart. Barrel Automotive League leader stat Corey Hart as a pinch hitter for the Pirates. 333, third right now in the National League, and largely because of Hart, who is three for three with four RBIs as a pinch hitter. Ground ball to short. And Iglesias throws him out. I'm gone for the Bucks in the bottom of the ninth. Two days ago, on opening day, the first pitch he saw. The 
Jay Hay is not somebody that you you know look to for those long balls, but in this situation, you, you hope for anything, and he does have the, the pop. He can't hit one out. Running out of it bats. Somebody's going to have to do something. Just two base hits, back to back singles. Back in the jinx inning. <laughs> That's kind of it. One and one. And he's rolled over the third twice and struck out. Soria's pitch. Soria's very strong all with the Kansas City Royals. He's their closer and he's filling in for Joe Nathan right now on this deep Detroit pitching staff. And Jay Hay hits one in the air to left. Cespedes will catch it for the second out. The Pirates down to their final out tonight. Pirates post game coming up. Rob King will be joined by none other than Bob Walk tonight. Bob's going to sit in for Teak tonight on post game. He scooped down there right after the final out, hoping it's uh, maybe not going to be a final out. How about a, a final hit? There's the pitch and Polanco takes a strike. Yep, blooping a blast time right now we're, for the we're gonna, we realize We're going to win this game. It can't be a final out. Whether it's this inning, the 10th inning, 11th, that doesn't matter. It could be the final. You're right, the final hit. Well, after the conclusion of the game, how's that? Whichever way it goes, you'll be there with Rob. The Bucks now down to the last strike. It's 0 and 2. What a night for Alfredo Simon. On the hill for the Tigers. Uh, strike away from sneaking out of here with a series win. Simon, eight innings, two hits, two hits shutout, two strikeouts, and Polanco strikes out, and that ends the game. For the second straight night, the Pirates just two over the minimum at the plate. And it's Rajay Davis for the second night in a row driving in the game winning run. His solo home run in the sixth inning stood up. Pitchers duel again here tonight. Won by the Tigers. One to nothing the final. Well, when this series started, uh, you know, looking at the Tigers coming in and what they were doing with the bats, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I wasn't alone in thinking, wow, we're going to have to. Uh, to kind of out hit these guys that uh, we're going to have to put our offense on display but that is not the way this series went uh, it was all about pitching both clubs and uh, not really a whole lot of offense tonight on either side uh, they had five hits we had two only one run in the ball game even when you got all these great hitters sometimes it still comes down to those pitchers Pirates now three and five. The Tigers go to eight and one. Final score here tonight: the Detroit Tigers one, and the Pittsburgh Pirates nothing. Let's send you downstairs right now to Rob King. Tim and Bob, thanks very much. As the guys mentioned, Bob Walk will be joining me for the post-game show. Kent to call me the night off. He will be back over the course of the weekend. The Pirates losing by the final score of one to nothing. Francisco Liriano, a great effort, but as we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Presented by Miller Lite. And it was the only real damage that Francisco Liriano gave up that either pitcher gave up. And it was Rajai Davis in the top of the sixth inning, the one time Pirate. That was traded for Matt Morris many moons ago. He hits the home run his first of the year, and that supplied Detroit with a 1 0 victory tonight. Well, coming up next on Pirates Post Game, presented by the Allegheny Health Network. We will look at the fantastic pitching matchup we saw here tonight on Jackie Robinson Day. Post game reaction from Clint Hurdle and the Pirates Clubhouse. Bob Walk will join us with analysis, highlights from around the league, and a look forward to the weekend series coming up with Milwaukee. All that and more coming up next on Pirates Post Game, presented by the Allegheny Health Network.